Hello, this video is about the Wahana, a distinctive electric aircraft developed by the Airbus Group. The content in this video will be split into two segments. In the first segment, we will look at the Wahana and go over its features. In the second part of the video, we will compare the Wahana to Opener's Blackfly as they are similar types of aircraft. The idea is to examine what changes in the design features of the two aerial vehicles result in different flight characteristics. This will help us in chalking out the template for the best electric aircraft design. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we aim to bring for you the latest developments from the world of sustainable air transport. Subscribe to get all of our latest updates. The Airbus Fahana is a single-seater EVTOL aircraft that was designed by the Airbus Group to provide a solution for urban air mobility. Now, it is often said that large companies cannot innovate. Airbus being a huge organization itself therefore relies on many of its subsidiary companies for innovation. One of them is the A-Cubed, which is based in the Silicon Valley. The culture of these subsidiary companies that are meant for innovation is that of a startup. The idea is to keep the subdivision small and free from the shackles of cumbersome procedures of the larger organization, thus allowing it to pursue disruptive and breakthrough technological development. In light of this, the a -Cube was tasked with creating the Wahana in 2016. Let's look at its design features one by one. The Wahana is an eight-propeller tandem-wing EVTOL aircraft. Its three-bladed propellers are variable pitch. The propeller pitch is changed from a low angle to high as the aircraft transitions from hover mode during takeoff to cruise mode. Each propulsor motor is rated at 45 kilowatts of power. Both the wings on the Wahana are tilt wings. The front wing or the canard has a tip propeller while the rear wing is similar but additionally has split winglets. The cord length of the back wing is 0.83 meters which is slightly longer than the canard. The wingspan of the Wahana is 6.25 meters while its airframe length and height is 5.7 meter and 2.81 meter respectively. For a single seater, it is a relatively large aircraft. Note that as the Wahana was developed to be pilot free, there had to be a lot of aviation equipment that needed to be packed in. The autonomous navigation is carried out with a LiDAR system together with cameras and radar. These systems weigh at least 15 kilograms. There are also electric actuators for tilt wing, ailerons, elevators and propellers which weigh around 21 kilograms. Furthermore, there is also a crash rated seat for additional safety which weighs another 15 kilograms. It is because of these additional components, most of which are absent in other electric aircrafts, that the Wahana is a much larger and heavier aerial vehicle for a single seater. The total weight of the aircraft is 725 kilograms, out of which the batteries alone weigh 272 kilograms. Being a relatively large aircraft, the Wahana needs a proportionate energy storage. The energy capacity of its battery pack is therefore 38 kilowatt hour with a pack level energy density of 139 watt hour per kilogram. The battery is split into two long modules of 19 kilowatt hour capacity each. They can be easily loaded into and out of the aircraft by a sliding mechanism. Even with such a large battery pack, the range of the Wahana is only 50 kilometers. Just for comparison, the Pipistrel Alpha Electro has a 21 kilowatt hour battery pack and has a range of 160 kilometers, and that too with two people on board. Although, to be fair, the Alpha Electro does not have vertical takeoff and landing capability, but even removing that portion of the flight, the Wahana is not as efficient in cruise mode as some of the other EVTOL aircraft. Having said that, what is impressive about the Wahana is its flight capability. Its stability during low speed maneuvers is second to none thanks to the 360 kilowatts of power at its disposal. It can turn in place without banking and very smoothly transition from hovering to forward flight. Given that it has the complexity of utilizing both tilt wings and variable pitch blades in tandem, its flight control systems are impressive. It has a very high 200 km per hour cruise speed which is at par with some of the fastest fixed wing electric aircraft. One unique aerodynamic feature of the Wahana is that the skid landing gear 
has very large fairings at the rear section that helps its cruise handling and provides damping against Dutch roll. When the Vahana was announced, there was great interest surrounding it because it was the first eVTOL passenger aircraft by a major player of the aviation industry, that is the Airbus Group. The very futuristic design art of the aircraft also caught the attention of many. This was despite Airbus mentioning that the Vahana is only a demonstrator and was not meant to be sold. A beta version of it was planned for two passengers, but in December 2019, Airbus pulled the plug on the Vahana project to concentrate on the City Airbus, its second venture in urban air mobility. This decision came after the Vahana had successfully completed 900 kilometers and over 13 hours of flight testing. And this brings us to the second part of the video. Here we will compare the Vahana to Opener's Blackfly. Both the aircraft have certain similarities, for example, both are tandem wing and have eight propulsors, and both the aircraft are single seaters. And yet, when we compare the energy required for every kilometer of distance covered, we see a huge difference between the two. The Vahana consumes 766 watt hour per kilometer, whereas the Black Fly consumes only 153 watt hour per kilometer. This means that the Vahana consumes five times more energy compared to the Black Fly. And it all comes down to the obvious size and weight difference of the two. The Vahana weighs 725 kilograms, whereas the Black Fly weighs 142 kilograms. These figures are of the empty weight of the aircraft. In terms of size, the Black Fly has around two thirds the dimensions of the Vahana. Notice a person standing next to the two aircraft to gauge the size difference. The propeller diameter of the Vahana is 1.5 meters, whereas in the Black Fly it is 0.91 meters. So the Vahana seemingly has a greater edge. But when you look at the disc loading, which is the ratio of the aircraft weight to the combined swept area of the propeller blades, then we notice the opposite. The Vahana has a disc loading of 51.3 kilograms per meter square, whereas the Black Fly has a disc loading of 27.3 kilograms per meter square. One has to remember that the higher the disc loading, the more power is needed during hovering. Furthermore, the range is impacted as the wing loading of the Vahana is also high compared to that of Blackfly. That is 69.6 kilograms per meter square as compared to 24.5 kilograms per meter square. So head to head, the Vahana is much less maneuverable compared to the Blackfly. But on the flip side, the Vahana will be able to fly in more adverse conditions compared to the Black Fly. Similarly, the propulsion system in the Vahana uses AC motors, meaning they require an additional heavy component that is the inverter. The Black Fly, on the other hand, uses simple DC brushless motors that directly utilize the battery power with just a controller in between. The battery weight in the Vahana is more centralized, whereas in the Black Fly, the battery weight is more distributed. Now let's compare the airframe. The space inside the Black Fly is limited and the orientation of the passenger is not ideal. Its fuselage is only a little wider than a kayak. The Vahana, on the other hand, has ample space. Even the canopy in the Vahana has actuated hydraulic pistons, whereas the Black Fly requires manual locking of its bubble canopy. For saving weight, the Black Fly lands on its belly and has no landing gear while the Vahana features a skid landing gear. Hence, if you want to travel with style, comfort and safety in an urban environment, then Vahana is your aircraft. Finally, if we look at the aircraft from a systems point of view, then the Black Fly is a much simpler aircraft. Unlike the Vahana, it has a fixed pitch propeller and doesn't have an air data acquisition system, LiDAR, radar and obstacle detection camera. There are no tilt wings in the Black Fly and hence the additional mechanism required for tilting is not needed. The Vahana on the other hand should be imagined as a vehicle that is a two-seater in which instead of pilot you have a computerized system flying the vehicle but with much less weight than that of an actual pilot. Having said that, all those extra features really bog down the Vahana when it comes to flight time. As noted earlier, it consumes five times more energy compared to the Black Fly, and this is the reason why the Black Fly has a longer 68 kilometer range as compared to 50 kilometers, 
with a much smaller battery pack of 12 kilowatt hour capacity. It can also be safely said that even though Airbus never planned to sell the Vahana, but if it did, the cost would be prohibitively expensive. The Black Fly, on the other hand, because of its simple design, is reported to have a price comparable to a SUV when it rolls off the production line. Both the aircraft provide us with great guidelines for designing a new personal aerial vehicle. The tandem wing configuration brings with it several advantages. The use of eight propulsors has its merits of redundancy and distributed propulsion. Calculations have suggested that using six propellers with two larger ones on the back wing can reduce the energy consumption substantially. It would, however, require a greater vertical separation distance between the two wings. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. It helps the channel to grow. Thank you for your attention.